Hello friends, happy Tuesday. It's time for another episode of Tuesday Live at Five. This is Lena Gursa. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Cambridge, Ontario, Canada. And today I am all about cards for the boys and men. Well, they're all boys, really, in our lives. And I'm featuring the Let's Go Fishing Suite from the Stampin' Up! 2023-2024 annual catalog. Now, with Father's Day coming up this Sunday, I figured it would be a good time to focus on the men and boys or big boys in our lives. Uh, and I had so much fun playing with this suite. Um, I am not a fisher person. I don't mind sitting with the rod in the water, don't get me wrong, but it's not really my thing. Um, I enjoy being out in nature more than anything, but my mom is a huge fisherwoman. She, they live on a lake up in Northern Ontario, and as soon as the ice is out of the river, um, she is in or down at the lake every night fishing. So she, this suite is for her, uh, but, I am primarily focusing on masculine cards today, but that doesn't mean that the, these cards couldn't be sent to a Fisher woman like my mom as well. Uh, so I'm going to show you the suite and um, I'm going to show you three projects. Two of them are fun folds. I'm kind of excited about these fun folds because I had a great time, like so much fun designing them. And uh, I'm going to show you all the step-by-step -step how to make it. And I will put all the measurements in the description as always, so that if you fall in love with one of these projects and you want to try them, they are all there. One stop crafting inspiration for you. Okay. All right. Now let me just pull up my video and see who is here. Let's see. I'm wrapped in a wrap. <laughs> so it is June what? June 13th. And I am wearing a wrap because it is freezing in my basement. My husband likes to keep our house meat locker cold. And uh, so I'm freezing and I had to go and get a wrap <laughs> so that uh, my teeth weren't chattering through the video. All right, we've got Joyce and Jill. Hello, ladies. See who else joins. Hi, Sue. Welcome. Um, all right. So a couple things I want to talk to you before we get going here. So first of all, uh, the DSP that is part of this suite is part of the DSP sale that is happening during the month of June. So 15% off select DSP packs from the annual catalog. This is one of them. The Gone Fishing or Let's Go Fishing DSP is uh, one of the uh, sale packs. So you can grab this at a discount this month only. Um, and I would recommend if you're thinking about picking up this suite, uh, and trust me, after I show you these projects, you're going to want to, <laughs> sorry, not sorry. Uh, I just love these projects so much. Um, you don't want to order the, use the suite order number because you won't get the discount on the DSP. Okay. So order the bundle and the embossing folder and the DSP separately so that you get the sale price on the DSP. Okay. That's my first little tip. Secondly, uh, this is a big week for me as I tomorrow am celebrating my 13th year as a demonstrator. And, uh, it certainly has been a wild ride. <laughs> Never really anticipated my I'm just noticing my camera is gradually drooping. It's like I'm sliding off the screen. There we go. We'll adjust that as we go. I'm going to have to tighten this up a little bit, I think. There we go. That should help. Okay. Uh, so 13 years tomorrow um, as a demonstrator. And to celebrate, I am offering an ordering special that starts tomorrow and runs until my birthday mentioned June is a big month, uh, until my birthday, which is on the 25th of June. So it's kind of a, a 11 day ordering special that will start tomorrow. And that special is with every $60 purchase, you'll receive a free set of Stampin' Blends of your choice. So our Stampin' Blends come in pairs, a dark and a light of each shade. And with your $60 order, my special for you to celebrate my Stampin' anniversary and my birthday all in one big special, uh, you'll get to choose your choice of a pair of Stampin' Blends for every $60 you spend. So if you spend $120, you get to choose two sets of Stampin' Blends. You see how that works? All right, now the only way to do this is you can place your order online in my online store, and then um, I will reach out to you. Uh, Tomorrow there will be a post happening right here on this page and I'm going to send out um, a, a quick little newsletter with the info as well. Uh, there will be a host code. So if you're ordering online, you're going to want to use the host code so that I know that you're ordering as part of this special. And uh, once you do that, I will reach out to you and ask you which Stampin' Blends you would like and I will get them ordered for you. Okay, you won't be able to add them to your cart and get them for free in my online store. This is something that I'm doing for you. Okay, um, the other option, of course, is to send me your order. And um, just mention the special and I will order the stamp blends that you would like. Okay. All right. So that is my big news this week. 13th anniversary as a demonstrator. Come, 
my my special sale and then that's gonna run all the way to my birthday on the 25th all right enough talking let me flip my camera oh let's see who's here oh we got some more joining hi deb hi sonia thank you for sharing hi nancy well you know i'd like to i like to show my appreciation to all of you and all of my customers um i couldn't do what i'm doing <laughs> customers I wouldn't be in business for very long so um, I want to offer this as a as a fun little special uh, because my stamp my, one of my favorite Stampin' Up products are Stampin' Blends and uh, even if you haven't tried them this is a great way to try them because uh, it's not going to cost you anything but I'm just going to warn you once you try them you may just want them all. I'm just going to put that out there. All right. So let me flip my camera. We are going to get to it. I'm going to show you the suite and we're going to get stamping because I got lots to show you. So here we go. All right, let's do the old flipperoo here. Try and get this as straight as I can. I'm just gonna lock this up so it's nice and tight so it doesn't sag. And there we go. That looks pretty good. Okay, so this suite is called Let's Go Fishing. The actual bundle is called Gone Fishing, but it is a fun, fun suite. And whether you are a fisher person or not, um, you're going to, well, I'm going to show you why you need this suite. So just bear with me. Um, you'll find it on page 78 and 79 of the annual catalog. The entire suite in Canada is $99. But again, you don't want to order it using this suite number because you want your discount on the DSP. So order the items individually if you decide that you need to have this suite. Okay. All right. So let's look at the products. This bundle is absolutely fantastic. I cannot get enough of these dies. Um, they, there's so much detail and thought that went into these dies. It's just incredible. And you're going to see that as we um, get going here today. But we have this large pair of dies that cut out um, a tackle box. But the cool thing about this die, when it cuts, it actually creates all of these little rectangles as well. So I'll just quick grab these here. Give me one sec. So all of these little rounded corner rectangles were cut using this die. So not only does it cut your tackle box, but it also cuts some fantastic labels for your sentiments. So kind of dual purpose. So even if you don't want a tackle box, this cuts some great labels and with one pass through the machine, I should mention. So then we also have um, this cool die. I will show you this on a project at the end. Um, it cuts the edge of the water and then it also cuts, this is actually upside down. It also kind of creates the ripples in the water. So it embosses the ripples. Actually, let me show you that card now. Here, let me show you it, what it looks like. So can you see... It's, I've used the die to cut the edge of the cardstock, but then also it embosses sort of the ripples in the water. Such a cool die. Um, this one also creates ripples. So if you have been fishing or you've been on a lake late in the evening as the fish are, are feeding, you will see these little ripples popping up all over the lake where the fish are, are feeding. That's what those are. And then, of course, we've got open dies to cut out stamped images from the set. Um, lots of addi additional little details that you will see in action as we go through today. Okay, so just a fantastic bundle. And then of course, an awesome new embossing folder. You're gonna see this in action today as well. So I'm not gonna show too much more about that. You will see that in a few minutes. And then of course, we have our gorgeous DSP. So this is on sale, as I mentioned earlier. And it's 12 by 12, you get two of each pattern in a pack. So we've got our fish, awesome for fussy cutting, but also these fish can be cut using the die. Okay, and then we've got some smaller fish swimming the opposite direction. We've got some flies, some larger, more colorful flies. Love this water pattern. I've used a ton of that. And then we've got our fishing poles. And then, of course, when we flip over, we get some more generic patterns. So we've got fishnet. We've got a map, which probably doesn't read as a map on the video. It is sort of like a, almost looks like a linen look uh, where it's been printed on linen. We've got a great plaid, a gray stripe. Love this worn sort of blue barn board. And then um, another plaid. So just fantastic DSP for many, many purposes, not just fishing themed projects. All right, so let's get to it. 
first project we are going to make today is this one. Uh, let me just move my light a little closer. It looks a little dark over on that side. Um, so I posted this earlier today and I actually was kind of thinking as my mom, of my mom when I was making this because it's kind of got, it's a little girly. It's got some pink fish uh, and it's got a pink bobber. So I was kind of thinking a little bit on the feminine side. Uh, now my mom has been retired for many years. Uh, she was an elementary school teacher, taught for 35 years and retired. Um, but this is, I made as a retirement card because it is that time of year when we teachers thinking about how much longer we have to go and uh, we were saying bye to several colleagues this year who are retiring and uh, it's always nice to just kind of think about two years from now when I'll be one of those people saying goodbye so to start I have a piece of very vanilla cardstock it is cut to four by five and a quarter inches and I have embossed it using that new twisted rope embossing folder so I'm just going to hold that up closer to the camera so you can see it I know it's a little bit hard to see sometimes on um, light cardstock it will pop a little bit more when I add my ink so we are just going to take a little bit of boho blue ink and my blender brush and I'm really just gonna kinda add a little bit of ink, sort of willy-nilly. I'm not being super careful. I'm not trying to do any kind of special blending. I'm just kind of adding a little hint of the blue. And what that also does is it brings out that beautiful embossed pattern, which shows so much better when we're, we've got a little color added to it. So again, I'm gonna come a little down a little bit from the top. So it's just sort of a splash of blue across the front of that panel. Okay, really simple. No special blending skills required. And then next we are going to come in with our fish. So let me dump out all my bits here. There are a few. So all of my fish I have just fussy cut from uh, the DSP. So I kind of chose fish that were sort of pinky and had the blue. There's so many different variations in color on these fish. So it's really easy to kind of pick and choose ones that are going to work uh, with the color palette that you want to use for your project. So I'm just going to kind of arrange these. This little guy was actually cut from the edge of the DSP because I didn't want to waste them. So he's going to kind of be swimming on down here like that. Okay. So that's the general idea of where things are going to go. I'm not going to glue these on just yet because we are going to stamp our um, label and then we'll kind of get a better idea of exactly where we want these to go. So we're just going to set that aside for a minute. So this is one of those labels that's cut with the tackle box. It is um, cut from very vanilla cardstock. And I'm going to come in with my good things come to those who wait um, stamp. And did I grab, I did not. Let me grab my pebbled path ink pad. Because evidently I forgot to grab it. So we're going to come in with some pebbled path ink. I'm just going to ink up my stamp here. And we're going to stamp this centered on our little label here. And you know, it's like Stampin' Up! actually planned this, the size of these sentiments to fit on these little labels. Rather clever of them. So then we are going to set this aside. Well, actually not aside. We're going to just kind of place this in, in the approximate area where we're going to want this to go. So it's going to go like about there. Um, so now we can go ahead and start gluing our fish down. So I'm just going to kind of work one at a time. I'm going to grab this big chubby fish here, add a little bit of adhesive. And then just pop that on. Okay, this guy's actually going to get popped up. So we're going to add a couple of dimensionals here. One, actually, let's use some minis. There we go. And we'll pop this guy on. So he's kind of swimming with his buddy there. All right, and then we'll add this one down here. And this little guy, I might use liquid glue because that's getting a little teeny tiny for seal. I'll put that one there. And then our little fella that's going the wrong direction, wrong way on a one-way street. We're going to tuck him in down here. Maybe he's going to be this guy's lunch. I don't know. <laughs> All right. So there is our background. Okay. Now we're going to work with this for a minute. So I'm going to set that aside. Um, and then we're going to put together this little bobber. So this requires three different dies. 
And honestly, when I first got these dies, I had no idea what these were for. Um, I actually had to look in the catalog to figure it out. So uh, we have our bobber, and then this is the, the contrasting color, and then this is the little stick, a little peg for the bobber. So I have my little peg that's cut from gray granite. I have my bobber that's in vanilla, and then I cut the, the contrasting layer in petal pink. So we're gonna just add a little bit of glue and layer the pink on the vanilla and they will layer quite nicely. Okay, let's make sure that's on nice and straight. And then I'm just gonna take and put a smidge of glue on my little peg here. There we go. And we're going to add that just like that. Okay, then I'm gonna bring in a little bit of basic gray twine. Where is, I had a loose piece, there it is. Um, so I had I have a little scrap here. I don't know that it's gonna be enough for what I need, but we're gonna start with it, and then we can always add a little bit more in a minute. So I'm gonna take and add a glue dot to the back of my bobber here. And then I'm gonna press the end of my twine in, and I'm just gonna wrap this around the end of the bobber a couple of times. And then I'm gonna press it again into that glue dot, just to kind of hold that securely. But then what we're going to do is actually add this to the back of our label. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a little bit of adhesive just in this bottom corner. And we're going to stick this just kind of there, just like that, okay? Then I'm gonna come in with some more seal and we're just gonna kind of let this, this is our fishing line, right? So it's just gonna kind of swirl around on the back of our bobber, or on the back of our label rather, and yeah, I am gonna need more twine, but that's okay. This was a scrap, it's always good to use up your bits and bobs, right? So we'll go ahead and add this, a little bit more of this. And I'm not being super careful or trying to, you know, create any kind of pattern. It's just a little tangle of fish line there behind my label. Okay, then we're gonna add a couple of dimensionals and that will secure that twine really well. It's not going anywhere. And maybe one more down here. Okay, we'll get rid of our backings. And then we're gonna pop this on, just like that. Okay, now I'm gonna put this high enough that I'm not covering my little fishy's mouth there with the bobber. So there we go. Okay, now that is going to get layered on a boho blue mat. So this is four and one eighth by five and three eighths. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. Now I am gonna add my adhesive to the non-embossed cardstock just so that I don't run the risk of tearing my embossed cardstock. Sometimes with the seal, because it is so sticky, um, the embossed cardstock will separate because it has been weakened by the embossing. So sometimes I like to just put it on the non-embossed layer. And then our card base is gray granite cardstock. It is four and a quarter by 11 inches, scored in the middle at five and a half. Hi, Julie. Hi, Pam. Welcome. Thank you for sharing. I'm glad you could join me. We are all about the Let's Go Fishing Suite this week. I think I'm going to run out of seal momentarily. See if we have enough to get. We had just enough to finish this card. And I'll have to grab fresh one. All right. Our last touch are some little blue bubbles. So these are tinsel gems. Tinsel gems. Yes. I think this is the three pack. It may be the four pack. There are several packs of tinsel gems in the catalog. And I really wish that they had named them a little bit differently. Each pack is either three pack or four pack tinsel gems. Um, so this is in a blue. I'm not sure if it's intended to be balmy blue, but it sure is close. Um, to balmy blue and it works quite well. So we've got some little bubbles floating up and there is our finished card. Okay. Now on the inside of my sample, I add, I had just a little scrap of this DSP laying on my desk and I thought, okay, we'll add it uh, just for a little bit of something on the inside and I stamp my happy retirement. Okay. So that is number one, super quick and simple. Done and done. Now I'm so excited to show you number two. So excited. All right. So this is a card I showed my husband. I spent like quite a bit of time figuring out how to make this work and uh, showed my husband. He went, Oh, okay. 
I was rather disappointed. So I'm, I'm waiting for your response, okay, for your reaction. So this looks like a really basic Z fold or double Z fold. Um, really, really straightforward. Nothing super fancy until we have a jumping fish. How fun is that? So we open our card and our fish jumps up after our lure. All right, and of course on the back, we have space to write our greeting, but I thought that was so fun. My husband was so not impressed. He has no idea. Anyway, here we go. I'm gonna show you how to make this. It's actually way, way easier than you think. When I, I've seen wiper cards before, and I'm kind of gone, yeah, no, it's a little too involved, don't wanna do it. I'm so glad that I actually gave this a shot because it's really, really a lot easier than you think. Okay. Uh, keep in mind, all of the measurements will be posted after the video, so you don't need to write any of these down. I will post them all, okay? All right. Thank you. See, you guys appreciate fun cards that move, right? Right. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for reacting to my fun project. All right. So we need two pieces of the same colored cardstock. So I'm using Misty Moonlight. This piece is four and a quarter by eight and a half. So four and a quarter by eight and a half. And I've scored it at one and a half and three. Okay. So four and a quarter by eight and a half scored at one and a half and three. All right. This one, same length, eight and a half, but this one's only two and a half, two and a quarter. Okay. So this is two and a quarter by eight and a half. So you see how they're the same length. So if you take your cardstock, your sheet of cardstock, you're cutting it this way. All right. Um, this one is also scored at one and a half and three. So it's for measurements, just the second layer is narrower. Now you can actually adjust the width of this layer um, depending on what you're gonna have for your, your item that pops up with your wiper, but for, for the purposes of this card, um, this size works really well, okay? So we're gonna start with our larger piece and I'm actually gonna rotate it so that my score lines are to the right, okay? So I'm gonna fold this first score line inwards. Again, you just wanna take your time as you're doing this. And crisp up your fold, okay? And then the second score line we're folding back. So we're making that, that Z shape, right? Okay, so that is the foundation of our card. Now we're gonna add our DSP right now. So to start, I have this large wave pattern DSP. So this is four by five and a quarter. No, I lied, four and one eighth by five and three eighths. I went with narrow borders on this one. Okay, so that is going to glue right on there. So we're gonna go ahead and glue that down. So we'll pop that on. You're gonna have a narrow little border. You can certainly go with a four by five and a quarter inch and have a wider border if you prefer. If you don't like measuring eights, um, it's totally fine to do that, it'll work. Okay, now this inside panel, I didn't worry about because you don't really see it too much. If you really wanted to, you could certainly put another piece of this DSP up here, but I just felt like it wasn't really all that necessary, so I didn't bother. But we are going to add some DSP here at the top. So I have two pieces of this sort of barn board pattern, and you're gonna see that one is slightly longer than the other, okay? It's the longer one that we're going to use. This one measures two and a quarter, by one and three eighths. So it is going to get glued on that top portion. I'm actually gonna turn this because that little round looks like a nail in the barn board. Kind of bugs me. So we're gonna turn that around like that because that's gonna get covered up a little bit. So we're gonna have just a narrow little border. You're gonna have a large uncovered section here. It doesn't matter because it's gonna get covered up in a minute anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and add this little bit here. Okay, now obviously, if you are going to change the width of this, you're gonna to have to change this measurement. So if you make this narrower, you can make this piece longer so you don't have a gap there. If you're gonna make this wider, you can make this piece shorter, okay? But the width is not gonna change. It's gonna be one and three eighths wide, okay? So that is it for our base. We're gonna leave that, and then we're gonna pull in this smaller piece. And this time I have my score lines towards the left. So remember when we folded this one, my score lines were toward the right. This one, my score lines are toward the left. Okay, so I'm gonna go with the inner score line. I'm gonna fold it inwards. Am I? No, I lied. I'm going to fold this first one inwards. <laughs> and then I'm gonna fold this second one under. So I'm making yet another Z, okay? But it kind of faces the opposite way, right? So can you see how that's gonna come together? There's my, my larger piece, there's my smaller piece. 
All right, so again, we are going to add our DSP to the front of this one. So again, same wave pattern. This one is two and one eighth by five and three eighths. So it is going to get layered just like that. Okay. So we'll add a bit of glue and pop that on here. Hopefully straight. Okay, and then I have two pieces that are the same size. Okay, so these again are two and one eighth, and these are one and three eighths, yes. So my darker blue is going to go on the outermost one, and my waves are gonna go on the innermost one. Okay, so we'll add those. And what I love about this card is there are so many possibilities with it. Um, you could change up the DSP, you could have birds flying out from behind, you could have um, butterflies, you could have balloons, you could do, the little monkeys would be super cute, they could come swinging out from behind as well. There's so many possibilities with this simple, simple pop out wiper card. Okay, so there we go. All right, now, next thing I'm going to do is actually layer these two pieces together. I'm only going to put my glue right here because this is going to layer and match up flush with the bottom layer. Okay, so I'm going to put my glue on here. Doesn't really matter what type of glue as long as it's a strong one. I like using Tombow because it is very strong glue once it sets up. Okay. All right, so we have all of our pieces assembled. We've adhered our long narrow piece to the front. Okay, now we're going to work on this pop up wiper mechanism. So the key is this little itty bitty piece of cardstock. So it is cut to one by two inches. Okay. And I'm going to take this bottom right corner and fold it up so that this edge is flush with the top. So I'm, it doesn't have to be pretty. It can be downright ugly. Nobody's really going to see it. So we're just going to pinch that. I'll take my bone folder and crisp it up. Okay. All right. So we folded that corner down. Okay. So what's going to happen, we're going to glue this on, but to start, we're going to unfold it for a minute and we want to lay this piece onto our um, long panel here. So this is going to get glued in this center panel. So when we glue this on, we want a couple things you want to take care of. You want to make sure that this edge does not um, interfere with that fold. Okay. So it's got to be in from that fold. And you also want to make sure that this top edge doesn't extend past, you don't want it up here. Okay, so you wanna make sure it doesn't extend past the top of this piece here. Okay, so what's gonna happen is this is gonna get bent down this way. So we're just gonna apply glue to this little triangle. So I'm gonna bring in a little bit of Tombow and we're gonna add a bit of glue. So we're gonna stick this on right about there. Okay, we also wanna make sure that this is, oh, that's gonna be a little close to the fold, so we're gonna come in just a bit. We wanna make sure that this piece doesn't extend, like we don't wanna put it so low that this piece hangs out the bottom as well, okay? It's gonna be hidden. All right, okay, now we are going to come in with a little bit of acetate. So this is actually um, left over from when I remove or st remove my photopolymer stamp. So they come on an acetate sheet. And the idea is that you're going to actually peel your stamps off that acetate sheet and store them stuck to the inside of your stamp case. So I buy a lot of stamps and um, I end up with a lot of acetate. So um, I use this all the time. So you can wipe off any residue from the stamps with um, some hand sanitizer and a tissue and you end up with perfectly good acetate to use on your project. So this piece is about a half inch by two-ish. Okay, and what's going to happen, this is actually going to get glued this way, like just like this, okay? And we're gonna take our little fishy and we are going to glue him to the end of our acetate. So I'm gonna add a glue dot here. Actually, let's stick our acetate onto our card first. That's easier. So we're gonna add our, glue, our acetate onto our panel here or a little, this little flat piece. Okay, so that's gonna pop up like that. And then I'm gonna add a glue dot to the back of my fishy. And I'm going to stick it to the acetate. I'm not worrying about the fact that this is extending. It's gonna be fine, okay? 
So this is going to pop up like this. It doesn't seem to make sense because it looks like it's going to be backwards, but we're going to flip this over in a second. Okay, so I'm going to open this back up and we're going to stand up our fish like he's flying out. Okay, and what's going to happen? Do you see how that's going to work? Oh, except he's extending out the back. That's not good. We don't want him extending out the back that far. So we're going to move him a little bit higher on our acetate. I'm actually going to move my acetate up a bit. Let's move that up there. That will be better. Pop him on there. And again, we can just double check. So we're going to start with that open. That's better. See how our fish jumps? There he is. Okay, so all that is left to do is adhere this flap to the front of our card. So I'm going to go ahead and add a little bit of liquid glue here. And we're just going to stick this down. So I just want to line this up, make sure it's nice and flush. Okay, so I've got that stuck down. And when I close my card, my fish disappears. So that is the way our wiper mechanism works. Isn't that fun? So cool. All right, so now it's just a matter of decorating the rest of our card. So we're going to start with some fishy fishes here that I have fussy cut from the DSP. So this guy is actually going to be swimming by. Uh, actually, you know what? I might put him, I don't know. What are we going to do? We'll put him there like he's only a part of a fish. And then we'll add this guy up here like that, I think. Yep, that works for me. So we're just going to go ahead and add a bit of liquid glue here. And pop this guy on. Our headless fish. This is cut from the edge of the DSP. I don't like wasting any of the images. So it's a great way to use them against the edge of your project. And then we'll add this guy. And this little guy. Okay, and then we're going to work on our label. So we have here another one of those um, rectangles that is cut with the tackle box die. And we're going to stamp good things come to those who wait in Misty Moonlight ink. I, think I actually did it in Night of Navy, but that's okay. We'll use Misty Moonlight. That works too. So we're going to go ahead and stamp that on our label. Just like that. And then I have some additional little bits and bobs, some lures and whatnot uh, that we are going to add. So we're going to make a little fly for our jumping fish to be going after. So again, I'm going to take and add a glue dot. Let me get rid of this. Oops, there's actually still some glue dots on there. So let's just put a glue dot on the back of our feather there. So this is the fly that our jumping fish is going to be going after. So we're going to add just a mini dimensional on the back of this to hold it in place. And then we're going to pop that onto our card. So we're going to do this with the card open so we can kind of get it positioned as though the fish is jumping for it. Okay. All right. Now our other little bits here, we are going to add a hook to our lure. So this is just die cut from silver foil. So I'm just gonna add a glue dot and then I'm gonna feed this little hook through the bottom hole and adhere it to the glue dot just like that. So that gives me my hook on my lure. So that is actually going to get stuck to that bottom corner of our label. So we'll add a little bit of seal and pop that on. Okay, and then our uh, bobber is going to be tucked in behind that. So again, a little bit of seal and we'll pop that on. And then our last little lure is gonna go in the opposite corner. So again, a little bit of seal and pop that on. And then that is going to get adhered to this front panel. So sometimes it's fun to actually close this and I like to cover up that little fly so it's a bit of a surprise when the fish jumps. So I'm gonna stick that on right about there. I'm gonna add a couple of dimensionals to my card here. So one, two and three and then I'm going to take my label and just pop that on and again just trying to hide that fly that's hiding in behind there okay so that's going to go on there's my jumping fish so far so good 
All right, the last little touch is to add our inside sentiment. It just says congrats. And so I'm just gonna stamp that in, just on a little scrap of cardstock, and then we're just gonna fussy cut that out. So there we go. And let's clean up the mess here, because we have a bit of one. We'll grab our scissors, and we're just gonna cut that out. Nice and neat. Now you do need to cut fairly close to the letters on this um, for it to fit on that little inside panel there. Uh, remember, it's only an inch and a half wide. So you don't have a ton of room for error here. So that is going to get stuck inside just like that. So we'll add just a little smidge of glue. Just like that. And we'll pop this inside. That's not the straightest fussy cutting job, but that'll do. Oops, don't move you. There we go. Okay, and then the last touch on the front are some of the in color uh, dots. So I'm just going to take and add a few of these. Are, these are in boho blue, which works so perfectly with this DSP. So we got a few little bubbles from our fishies. There we go. And that is that. Now on the back, I'm not going to take the time to do that now, but I'll just quick show you. I added a layer of basic white. This is just four by five and a quarter inches. Um, I stamped a sentiment stamped some more some of the um the little ripples and in both misty moonlight and boho blue and then did a little bit of ink blending to get that okay so there is your fun little wiper card with your jumping fish all right isn't that fun okay let's go on um so this one is a fun little fishing vest it's a gatefold card Okay, and it uses, again, the dies from the um, Let's Go Fishing bundle, but then it also used some of the Cottage Corners dies for the pockets. So I'm going to show you how to put this one together. So we're going to start with a basic card base, so five and a half by eight and a half, okay? And um, we scored it at two and one eighth here and two and one eighths here. So I just, what I do when I'm making gate folds is I measure my first one, two and one eighths, and then I rotate it 180 degrees and do the second one. Rather than try and figure out what this second measurement is this way, it's just easier to rotate. So two and one eighth and two and one eighth. Okay, so when we fold them closed, the um, edges meet in the middle, nice clean gate fold. Okay, so that's what we're starting with. So the first thing we're going to work on are these little corners for the collar. So I'm going to open up my card base again, and I'm going to use just the grid, the corner of my grid paper, the ruler here, and I'm going to measure one inch, no, I lied, one and a quarter, on each side. So one and a quarter here and one and a quarter here. So I've made my little tick marks, okay? And then I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. So one and a quarter and one and a quarter. Okay, so now I have my little tick marks. I've got them here and I've got them here. Now, rather than score, this little trick is a really easy way to fold without having to score this little bit here. So I'm gonna line my ruler up with my tick marks. Okay, and then I'm just gonna take that corner, I'm gonna bend it just to start the fold. Then I'll take my ruler away and use my bone folder to crisp it up. And then I get a nice clean corner fold. Okay, I'm gonna do the same thing on the other corner. So we'll go here and we'll crisp that up. And again, finish it with our bone folder. Okay, so that is the, the collar for our best. Now to create sort of these beveled corners, we're going to come back this time with our card closed and I'm going to close my card and measure three quarters of an inch on both sides. So three quarters here and three quarters here. Okay, and then I'm gonna do three quarters down here while I've got it against the ruler. I'm gonna rotate and measure three quarters down here and three quarters here and rotate again. So I'm basically just marking three quarters in from each corner. So three quarters there and three quarters there and one more, this last little guy right there. Okay, so I'll close that so you can see it. So I've got three quarters measured on this corner, three quarters measured here, 
three quarters here and three quarters here. Okay. Now you can use your trimmer. I'm going to use my guillotine just because it's quick and easy. You are going to want to cut through both layers. Okay. So now I'm going to line up my little tick, mark, tick marks and just chop. Okay. I'm going to do that on all four corners. So we're going to do a little choppy choppy. There we go. And another one. Choppy choppy. And one more. I'm going to move my little collar out of the way just so that I don't accidentally nip it because based on how the rest of this video has gone, <laughs> it totally would happen. All right. So there we go. There is our vest. Really quick and easy way to make um, a vest shape. So now we can get that out of the way and we're going to work on the rest of our card. So to create the texture on, can you see the texture on the vest here? We are going to use this sort of I don't know, ripple stamp or wave stamp from the stamp set. And we're going to do tone on tone stamping. So I'm using Mossy Meadow ink on Mossy Meadow cardstock. Okay. And we are going to just stamp all over these front panels. Now, the easiest way to do this, I'm going to open this up and we're just going to start kind of at the bottom and I'm going to come up along the side first. So you want to keep this fairly straight. I'm not really worried about getting it perfectly straight. Um, straight-ish is fine. All we're doing is adding some texture. Okay, so I've kind of done along the edges there. Then I'm going to open this up and do the other side. The only reason I'm opening it up is so that I don't get ink where I don't want it. Okay, so it kind of almost creates a bit of a camel look uh, or camouflage look just like that. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. So again, I'll start with it closed, work my way across. I'm going really quickly. This isn't as straight as I may have done it if I wasn't rushing, but All right, so let's finish this side. So just filling in the gaps and I kind of like where it overlaps. It just adds that extra bit of texture. Okay, so that is that. Now we're gonna add even more texture by doing a little bit of ink blending. So I'm gonna just grab my blending brush and we're gonna come in just around the edges. I'm not worrying about this, the center at, at all. I'm just kind of coming around the edges and darkening down the edges a little bit. So again, this is with the card closed. Okay, so here we go. There we go. So can you see just that extra little bit of shading there? We're going to do the same kind of technique on our pocket pieces, but before I stamp on them, I just kind of want to explain how I made them. So these are, if I put these together, there's actually a little bit missing, but these are the Country Corners dies from the annual catalog. I featured them a couple of weeks ago, weeks ago. So there's one of the labels. I think this is the third largest and this is the second largest, not counting the little banner. Okay. Um, so I cut them both just one label it gives you two pockets. Um, and then, so then these ones are cut to be one and a half inches. And these ones I think are one and a quarter. Yeah. One and a quarter. So I basically just cut the ends off the labels to make my pockets. All right. So we're not going to stamp on that, the sentiment one, but we are going to stamp our little texture bit on our other pockets. So again, I'm just going to come across here really quickly and add my ink. There we go. And then one more. Come on, don't stick to my stamp. There we go. And then again, we're going to add just a little bit of shading around the edges. Just adds a little bit of dimension to our vest here. So I'm kind of going all the way around on the pockets here. We'll do these guys. Well, Deb, you see, it's like this. I wanted to add some texture. I didn't really want to emboss. Um, I wanted to keep it 
um, without any embossing, just because of the, the gatefold. It makes embossing a little bit trickier. So the only texture stamp that was included in the stamps, if there had been spatters, you would have seen spatters on the vest. <laughs> but this is the only texture stamp that was included in the stamp set. So there we go. That's how I ended up with waves <laughs> adding my texture on the vest. So I'm just going to add a little bit of shading to the sentiment pocket as well. So I have stamped and heat embossed the uh, sentiment in white on that mossy meadow cardstock. Okay. Now it's really um, a matter of doing some assembly. So let me just dump out my other little bits and pieces here. So we are going to sort of fill our pockets as we go. So all of these little bits and bobs are from the stamp set and the dies. So many cool, it looks like somebody dumped a tackle box on your desk when you, when you do all of this die cutting. So much fun. Uh, so we've got lots of little bits and pieces. So we're just going to kind of build um, some fishing tackle. So this little die, die cut, is um, Cajun Craze, and we're going to go ahead and glue that to one of these adorable little, well, I don't know if you can call it a hook adorable, but it sure is adorable to me. Uh, we're going to glue that just with a glue dot um, onto one of our gold fish hooks here. So I'm just going to add a glue dot, and then we're going to throw that on there just like that okay now that's going to go on one of our smaller pockets so it's just going to kind of hang out there i think we're going to need an extra glue dot that does not want to stay put there we go that's better and then we're just going to kind of tack that onto the pocket so it's kind of hanging out of a pocket like that we've got a little lure so we're going to add that a little bit of seal if my seal will last we'll see uh, that so there's one pocket done okay and then this little guy we're actually going to thread a little bit of linen thread through the holes so we have you kind of get this little piece and this little piece they um, come through it's just one die that cuts both of those pieces so it's not fussy at all you just kind of run it through and then we're going to add our linen thread we're just going to tie a knot to hold those pieces together just like that. And I might just throw a glue dot under there so it doesn't slip and slide around. So we'll pop that in under there. There we go. And then I'm gonna trim off my tails. And then that is going to get adhered, adhered to one of our larger pockets. So we'll add that guy in there. And then we've got our bobber. Where's my bobber? There you are. Nope, that's not it. There it is. So it's going to be peeking out. And I kind of rotated it so you see a little bit of the color there. Okay. And then our last pocket without the sentiment, we're going to add a couple of more lures. So we'll have this guy peeking out here. And this guy peeking out here. And then I added, where'd my other gold hook go? It's going to tuck in behind. I'm just going to add a little bit more seal here. And we're gonna pop that so it's kind of hanging out there like that. Isn't it fun filling pockets <laughs> on a fishing vest? Um, and then we're, our last one, the one that has our sentiment, we're going to add a little fly so it's kind of hanging out there. And another lure. I think I might turn this one this way. And then my leftover twine, we're actually going to just sort of coil around our fingers. So we'll just kind of wrap it around our fingers like this. And then it's just going to kind of be peeking out at the back of the pocket here. So I'm going to add a little bit more seal and we're going to pop this on. So it's like some extra fishing line that's sort of hanging out in the pocket there like that. Okay. Now all of these need dimensionals because they're all going to get popped up onto the front of our card. Oh, the shiny lures are, it's just gold foil. Um, Joyce, it's just gold foil or gold foil sheets that are in the annual catalog. Nothing super special. Um, you can do the silver. Our silver foil is an online exclusive product now. Uh, it's not in the catalog, but it can still be ordered. The order number can be found in my online store. You can even order it right in my online store, but that is where you'll find your metallics now. So I'm just adding a few dimensionals to the back, and then we're going to go ahead and add these to the front of our vest. However, we need to add our little placket here for our, bu our buttons. So this little die cut is from the Wonderful Thoughts dies. So this set of dies, it's, it's 
a sentiment set that has coordinating dies to cut out the sentiments. And so this particular sentiment that goes with this die is a very long, narrow sentiment, uh, but it makes a perfect little placket for the front of my vest. So we are going to add a little bit of glue just along the left side of our vest here. So I'm just going to take, if I can get my glue to flow here, we're going to add just a bit of glue along that left side. Then I'm going to close my vest and I really want this to be centered. So I'm going to center this little placket piece right down the middle of the vest and hopefully straight. And hopefully I didn't put so much glue on. Nope, that it glued shut. <laughs> All right, so that would be about how things would go today because that's kind of how this video has been. All right, we're going to trim off that little bit of extra there. Just like that. Our collar pieces are going to get glued down flat. So we'll just add a bit of glue there and stick those down. Come on, stay. <laughs> okay, you know what? Let's add a dimensional because they don't seem to want to stick. So we'll dimensional them down. That'll hold it. Because, you know, I don't really want to fuss with this anymore. There we go. Okay, so there is our vest. These little triangles are going to be sort of the, the decoration on the collar. So this started out as a one inch uh, by one inch square of DSP. It's that wave pattern on the back and that sort of map on the other side. And then I just cut it on the diagonal to give myself triangles. So I'm just going to put a little smidge of glue on each triangle and they're going to get stuck to form our collar. There's one. And number two. Right there. Okay. There we go. Um, now we are ready to go ahead and adhere all of our little bits and bobs in our pockets. So I like to lay it out first um, so that I kind of get an idea of spacing and where I want things to go. You want to make sure that you leave enough room, put your, your bottom pockets low enough that you have room to put your top pockets on, but it's going to kind of go something like that. So let's just start gluing them down. So we'll get rid of our backings here. And we're going to add this little guy right about there. And then this little guy right about there-ish. Let's see. Pretty close. And then these guys. This one's going to go right about here. And then last but not least, this little guy. I just want to make sure I eyeball this other pocket and kind of get them about the same height. Right about there looks... Uh, that's better like that okay now we're going to add our buttons we're going to use some of the uh, gold metallic dots and I actually use the large ones I felt like they worked a little bit better than the small ones so we're just gonna start at the top and work our way down I used five you could certainly use fewer if you were so inclined I just have a ton of these um, so we're gonna use them four and one more. Come here. Add that guy there. Okay, so that is our our finished vest. Now to, to finish the inside, um, we're going to stamp a sentiment. So I did Happy Father's Day for this one. So we're going to stamp, I'm so glad you're my dad, on the inside using Mossy Meadow ink. Okay, so I should mention that this is, again, that Countryside Corners die. This is the largest label, and I've cut it from that same DSP that we used for the collar. So we're going to go ahead and stamp, so glad you're my dad, on that. And then that is going to get glued inside our vest, centered, and hopefully right side up. So we'll open that up, pop that in. There we go, fairly straight. There we go. And there's our finished card. Isn't that cute? So fun. I love this one. 
All right, guys, thank you for bearing with me. Now, before you go, I have to show you, I'm going to bring in my finished one here. Um, I have to show you some more samples. Where'd my first one go? There it is. Um, because as I said, I've had so much fun playing with this suite. I just couldn't resist making a whole bunch. Um, so I showed you this one earlier. This has that features that fantastic die that both cuts and embosses the wave. Here's the tackle box. So fun. I posted this yesterday or maybe today. I don't remember. Um, but here I've used silver foil for all of my lures and hooks and my little lead weights and so fun. Again, all of these labels are cut using the tackle box die. And then here's another one. Good things come to those who wait. And another retirement card. I'm having lots of fun fussy cutting all of the fish. And here is that beautiful uh, twisted rope embossing folder again, this time in the wild wheat. And I love the use of this wavy trim. I think it works really, really well. And then this one was actually my project from our team meeting last night. Uh, one of my Stamping Symphony members demonstrated this really fun DSP cutting technique that allows you to make three cards um, all with one one round of cutting so really fun and so this is my project that I made because I just happen to love this DSP so this is the one that I used so there you go everybody so stay tuned I will edit <laughs> and revise and edit in the corrected version of that second card and uh, then you'll be able to catch all of the uh, measurements and the replay on my YouTube channel okay thanks everyone thanks for bearing with me with my I don't know brain cramp that I had today and I will see you next week for another episode of Tuesday live at five bye for now